Okay, so good morning. Um, my name is Dara Coakley. I'm from the Cork Institute of Technology and I'm here to give an update on the Teltools project. So the project partnership consists of CIT, UCC, DIT, IT Trilly and UCD. And um, I suppose the concept of the project kind of, kind of originated from um, the provision of training for technology enhanced learning in uh, higher education institutes. So research kind of indicates that there's a number of barriers here around, I suppose, first off, a paucity of training in terms of the technology kind of evolving and kind of certain training uh, elements becoming useless. And um, also maybe a lack of a focus on a pedagogy or a tie-in in terms of the technology to a particular teaching or learning activity. And um, a lot of the data which was um, identified in a number of the national forum reports helped kind of reinforce these findings. So data from things like the National Survey on the Use of Technology, um, from the Principles and First Insight, excuse me, First Insights report. Um, some of the main kind of barriers identified for Irish, uh, or for training for Irish um, uh, HEIs in terms of technology enhanced learning was a lack of available training, a lack of time for training on the part of the instructor, degrees of unawareness regarding the potential of TL, and also a lack of consideration in terms of the pedagogical approach or a tie-in, I guess, to a particular activity for teaching or learning. So from this, the kind of concept for the project was to develop um, short, easily digestible kind of learning objects um, for on technology enhanced learning, but with a focus on a particular teaching or learning activity, to develop an online platform to facilitate learning and house these learning objects, to hold information sessions, which is kind of live webinars, to promote and provide training, and also to um, essentially just pilot the content and the online platform, receive feedback and integrate that back into development so the whole kind of circle begins again. So in terms of project outputs, I suppose the main project output has been the learning content and the online platform. So if you bear with me, and hopefully there's no major technical difficulties, um, I might just show this short animation, which um, we developed just as a means of kind of advertising the platform and the learning content, and again, the concept as a whole. So at the moment, the um, online learning platform is, uh, has a URL of tellu.me. Now, when you go there first, it's a very basic kind of sign-up screen with this animation. But behind that, then, the entire platform is kind of fully running. We just haven't made it fully available to, um, to the general public for reasons I'll talk about in a little bit. So rather than um, kind of making you sit through the entire animation, um, as I mentioned, uh, the URL is tellu.me. Um, there's a number of uh, granular learning objects there designed for short and practical training on TEL. And the platform itself is designed to be free and open with content that's easily searchable and so forth. Uh, maybe just to give a brief kind of breakdown of the content in the platform. So all content in the platform consists of short learning objects um, called micro lessons. And these are uh, focused on um, addressing a teacher uh, helping to support a particular teaching or learning activity, activity using a relevant technology. Um, uh, these micro lessons can then be combined into micro courses, which are slightly kind of longer courses then with kind of larger learning ob objectives. And then these micro courses can be uh, uh, strung together to form learning, what we call in the platform, learning paths, which is even larger learning objectives again. So if I could just very briefly show you the platform, um, the homepage is available here, and it details some of the terminology and the kind of concepts, uh, some of the benefits, and some of the latest courses. Um, to uh, demonstrate a course in action, um, it's possible to search through um, the, uh, through the um, area on the front, or else I'll show you in a moment the full kind of content library. So then the learning content within uh, the platform typically begins with some kind of an introduction. Um, it's possible for learners to kind of begin from where they left. So the last point that they left the course, they'll be able to go straight back into that again. Um, the curriculum or the kind of steps in the course is available on the right-hand side here. And then it's also possible to navigate through the buttons here. And all of the um, micro lessons follow a, um, a uh, excuse me, a similar structure. Um, and as part of that, um, we're hoping to include a short animation for every micro lesson for this section. Why should I use this particular piece of software for 
uh, teaching and learning, with the intention that this would be kind of um, that this would kind of be help uh, a useful tool for helping to identify to instructors why they should bother learning about this particular technology um, for supporting or enhancing their practice. So. Um, as well as the learning content and the online platform, we've, um, we've created a number of case studies. So these are essentially just what they say in the tin, kind of case studies or interviews with um, real-life uh, TEL users. So they include exemplary practitioners and maybe not so exemplary practitioners. Um, and these, as I mentioned, are kind of essentially interviews with instructors and they're kind of based on their own real-life practice. So uh, their experience in using a particular technology for teaching or learning, um, the benefits, the drawbacks, things they'd encourage others to be aware of, so on and so forth. And I can quickly just um, go to one here. So these case studies would be, um, are available in a number of different um, formats. So some are text-based, some like this one are an audio recording, other would be video interviews, so on and so forth. So um, we've also held and are hoping to hold a lot more information sessions. And these would essentially be live streamed webinars and they'd be carrying on kind of from what was covered in the platform, but you know how to use a particular tool or for a particular teaching and learning approach, um, but with additional elements in terms of demonstration, um, opportunities for discussion with attendees, um, and uh, all of these would be recorded and would be made, made available to viewers afterwards as well. Um, as well as this, what's been developed is a project scope plan, which is essentially a map of the learning content. So all of the learning content to be included in the platform and how that breaks down in particular teaching and learning categories and into the micro lessons and micro courses and paths. Um, and from all this activity as well, um, we're hoping that um, a, large no a large amount of additional learning material is kind of developed um, as well. So these will include kind of presentations for staff using Google Slides for each micro lesson. So the same content that will be in the micro lesson but made available on Google Slides in case one wish to, I don't know, uh, do some training within their own institution. Um, recordings of the live webinars, animated content for um, the section I showed earlier in terms of why should I use this particular tool for this particular teaching approach. Um, and also a number of articles on the project outputs, the project teams, so on and so forth. So um, the last kind of meeting such as this which we had, um, there was quite a bit of feedback from the international panel. Um, so um, since then we've tried to implement that uh, feedback as best we can. So a big element was the approach to content in the platform. So um, initially kind of content, how content was kind of covered in the platform was very much focused on, I suppose, more abstract or kind of larger concepts to do with teaching and learning. So initially the platform was looking at how to use blogs for reflective practice or how to use forums um, for work-based learning. And what we found, feedback which was given from the international panel, as well as from pilotees who we piloted the platform and the learning content with, was that um, I suppose it became, it became quite complicated to write for, first and off. But also, when you wanted to include the relevant amount of necessary information for something like reflective practice, the learning, the learning object no longer became granular granular or short, it became long and unwieldy. So we moved away from that towards a more kind of practical approach towards what's actually done inside and outside of the classroom, things like facilitating discussion using particular technologies, um, uh, creative activities using particular technologies like mind mapping and brainstorming, excuse me, brainstorming, developing, supporting uh, resources for what will go on in the classroom, so on and so forth. Um, another uh, piece of feedback which we incorporated into the platform was based on feedback from the international panel about the taxonomy which the platform used. So previously we had referred to blocks and stacks and um, someone made the point that there's no need to reinvent the wheel in terms of the terminology that's used. So we switched to the hopefully more understandable micro lesson and micro courses. Um, and the next step, um, the, uh, an additional piece of important feedback from the panel is uh, very much tied into the next step of the project which is to focus heavily on disseminating the platform and to get buy-in from the target audience in as much as possible. And also um, to try and help maybe control expectation in terms, of, um, in terms of what the user is expecting. So in terms of national impact to date, um, we've been piloting the platform and the content with very small focus groups or with individuals. And I suppose the reason for this was we had a reluctance to maybe release the platform and the content to the general public until, um, until I suppose we were satisfied with it. And this is based in 
previous experiences which we've had with piloting where one only gets to make a good first impression the one time. So uh, um, the, con the platform and the content is almost ready to go. Within the next week or two, we think it should be ready to fully release and to the general public in terms of the standards we've set for it. Um, and then the intention for the remainder of the project is to disseminate the project and the platform as heavily as possible and get that kind of buy-in from kind of staff on the ground that, we, uh, that had been mentioned by the panel. Um, in terms of ongoing impact and ongoing dissemination, as I mentioned, we've done quite a bit of piloting with kind of small groups and individuals. We've submitted a number of conference papers into conferences like ESIA and AICC. Um, we've presented and uh, disseminated national forum events and seminars. We've also held a number of live webinars or information sessions we're hoping to hold a lot more before the end of the project. And we've also tried to disseminate the project and the platform via other uh, ongoing national forum projects. So in terms of upcoming dissemination for the remainder of the project, we'd be very much focused on direct contact with Irish higher education institutions, um, a, large, uh, a large volume of information sessions, uh, submitting additional conference papers. We're looking to get to uh, mailing, group, mailing groups, such as ALT, which we think would be kind of a good way of kind of putting the platform out there and getting feedback, um, also through additional national forum projects. And we're also hoping that the um, call for case studies would maybe be a draw for people to participate in the project and to provide some kind of, um, and to get involved in it in that capacity. So in terms of the um, evaluation of the project, um, we feel that there's been some minor changes against the project plan, um, good in some ways, less good than others. We're ahead of time in terms of the platform development based on the original project plan, um, but we're a bit behind in terms of the amount of information sessions or webinars that we had wanted to have by this stage, and we're slightly behind in content development, although we're expecting that that will be resolved within the next um, couple of weeks. Um, and as I mentioned, in terms of piloting and promotion, uh, our intention is to continue to disseminate the project quite heavily, to receive feedback and to refine the platform based on that feedback for the remainder of the project. So the remainder of the project really is this kind of cycle of putting, putting it out there, getting feedback, refining the platform and content based on that, and repeating that process. Um, and also, as I mentioned, we're hoping to hold quite an additional number of information sessions to continue until the end of the project to kind of add some kind of live element to the, uh, to the asynchronous content that's available on the platform at the moment. So apologies if I rushed through that pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Um, so thank you very much for your attention.